An outcry develops in the wake of the murder of a Fort Hood soldier. The first woman Green Beret is set to graduate. And do the British Royal Marines have cooler uniforms than you? Probably. We're back at it on the briefing. Let's take a look. Welcome back to The Briefing. I'm Andrea Scott. First this week, new updates in the shocking story of the murder of a young soldier in Fort Hood, Texas. The tragic case has made national headlines and resulted in calls for action from Congress. Specialist Vanessa Guillen was found dead near the Army base recently. Here's what her family's lawyer had to say. I contacted the DOD IG's office early on uh, because, you know, if anyone it's, if they're accessible to everyone. Um, and that was prior to us finding her remains and prior to this murder and prior to all the cover-ups that we understand have uh, um, uh, transpired in this investigation. So at this point, it, we are not looking for the DOD to do its own inspect, uh, investigation of the DOD. We're looking for Congress. Uh, the Guillen story also reveals a new layer this week as social media outcry erupted following news the soldier allegedly complained of sexual harassment from fellow soldiers before she was killed. Following that claim, a number of women in the veteran and active duty communities have been speaking up to say that they too have experienced harassment and in some cases were ignored. Military Times editor Sarah Sicard has more. In the wake of new details emerging in the Vanessa Guillen case, various service members and veterans have come forward to share their own stories of sexual trauma, sexual assault, um, and rape being spurred by the fact that Vanessa Guillen herself purportedly faced similar issues but was unable to share it with her chain of command, feeling very much that the military system would fail her. Using the hashtag I am Vanessa Guillen, service members and veterans have taken to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to really share their stories, many of them for the first time. We talked to a number of women, all of them veterans, who had experienced a sexual trauma, who felt comfortable enough to be vocal about it. One such veteran is Navy veteran Paula Coughlin. She is the whistleblower from the Tailhook case in the 1990s. Her take on this issue was that she frankly can't believe that this is still ongoing. So shocking to the American public that um, a dedicated young woman in the military is murdered by a bad guy in the military and all of the complaints, all of the warning flags were ignored by her command. And that is almost identical to the, what precipitates um, a person coming forward every time, is that they are ignored, they have no voice. We have bipartisan support to take the commander out of the whole criminal process. And if that had happened, Years and years ago, when I came forward with my complaint about Tailhook, 30 years ago, just think about the, the number of victims that might still be in the military, that might still be alive. New York Senator Kristen Gillibrand has been a, a staunch supporter of removing the um, sexual assault cases from underneath the purview of the UCMJ. Uh, however, it has not gained traction thus far, but we will continue to watch this issue as it unfolds. Thanks, Sarah. Now to our other headlines this week. The Army now has a female Green Beret. After a female candidate graduated from the Special Forces Qualification Course on Thursday, she will be the first female soldier who will go on to serve in Operational Detachment Alpha. Another woman did complete the entire qualification course in the 1980s and was technically the first female Green Beret, but she was denied the opportunity to graduate. Now over to the Navy. As tensions continue between Beijing and Washington regarding who owns the South China Sea, the U.S. aircraft carriers Nimitz and Ronald Reagan conducted rare dual carrier operations there this week. According to the Navy, the two carriers launched fighter jets, quote, around the clock, while practicing other skills in tandem. The jets were also joined by an Air Force B-52 Stratofortress, a long-range nuclear-capable bomber. Two carriers are not believed to have operated together in the South China Sea since 2009. Okay, back to the U.S. 
A ban on the display of the Confederate flag in Defense Department workplaces and public areas might be coming if a draft policy now being circulated by Pentagon leaders is passed. The policy proposal, which has not yet been finalized or signed by Defense Secretary Mark Esper, came the same day President Donald Trump criticized NASCAR's decision to ban the battle flag at its races. If approved, the ban would bring the other military services in line with the Marine Corps, which barred public Confederate flag displays on its bases in early June. All right, over to the UK. Now for some uniform news. Do the Royal Marines have cooler uniforms than you? Probably. The British Commandos are about to get a brand new uniform, the most significant transformation since World War II. Not only are they lighter weight and more breathable, but they return to the traditional Royal Marines Commando insignia, just like that worn during raids into Nazi-occupied Europe in World War II. Sometimes, for us to move forward, we must first look back. And that's it for your headlines this week. Off to you, Ben. Thanks, Andrea. And now on to the defense side of the house, where Defense News Naval Warfare reporter David Larder takes a look at why the U.S. is selling Ukraine riverine boats to protect itself from Russia. Have a look. The U.S. State Department approved a sale of up to 16 Mark VI patrol boats to Ukraine to amp up its defenses from Russia. The boats that the United States has agreed to sell to Ukraine are the Mark VI patrol boat. It's a really sweet uh, boat. It's got a ton of machine guns on there. Uh, all told, I believe it's 16 boats. And with the optics and armaments and gun stabilizers and everything, we're talking about uh, about a $600 million pending sale. Ukraine and Russia both border the Kerch Strait, but Russia claims Crimea on the west as their own. It's largely seen this pending sale as a reaction to the 2018 incident where uh, Ukrainian uh, Navy personnel tried to transit the Kerch Strait, which is uh, leads into the Sea of Azov, uh, and they were interdicted by Russian warships. Now, the both Ukraine and Russia border the Sea of Azov. So technically, under international law, Ukrainians should have had free access to the Kerch Strait. The boats would help Ukraine assert itself in the region. Well, as with any weapons sale, obviously they're looking for a degree of deterrence. They put a little more teeth in their uh, patrol boats than the ones that were taken by Russia. One of the U.S. Navy's riverines that I interviewed about the Mark VI patrol boat last year said it, it's a it's a porcupine, right? You don't step on a porcupine and you don't mess with a porcupine because Obviously, you know there are consequences for doing that. That's all we have time for this week. Check us out on MilitaryTimes.com or on Army, Air Force, Navy, or MarineCorpsTimes.com. And give us a follow here on YouTube or check us out on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, or Facebook, or wherever. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.